Hi everyone, welcome to Data Analytics Tutorials. This is a series of video to cover SAP Cloud Platform integration for data services. Um, it's more towards end to end implementation of CP IDS in your organization. Um, if you're not a functional SAP functional or technical developer, or if you're a newbie in IT, or you don't have background of ETL um, or any other sort of tools, um, don't worry. These uh, uh, videos are will be really helpful for you to understand CPADS from the very basic. And um, you know, there is no as such prerequisite. So anyone without any prior IT knowledge also can learn CPADS very easily. Uh, so I, I'll start off with the setting other agenda for these set of videos. So uh, firstly, we'll try to cover um, an understanding of what is CP IDS, SAP IBP, and how does they fit into your enterprise. Um, and if it needs any special skills to learn this technology, or or you know if you if you need any technical background to understand it, um, then we'll go through the architecture of CP IDS and how CP IDS and SAP IBP is accessed. Uh, and then comes the important part, like uh, the different types of integration models which are there in IBP. One is time series integration and the other one is order based integration. Uh, don't worry if these terms are sounding very uh, technical to you. It's just the agenda. Uh, when we are going through each topic, we'll explain in very layman terms what it means and how, uh, you know, uh, just, just to sort out your understanding. So don't worry about it. Uh, then we'll just see like what are CPIDS agents, which is nothing but the brain of the entire architecture, uh, which is the, which are the agents and how how do we install the agents? Um, and then if you have to give some access to some user in CPIDS, so what are the different types of roles which are available and what level of access you can assign to anyone in CPIDS? And then comes the main part, which is the hands-on part, which is about creating connections. Uh, we call them data stores in CPIDS. Connections to source system or connections to target system. Yeah. Uh, followed by setting up of project, which is a folder uh, to manage all your jobs. Uh, the jobs uh, or any process is nothing but a task. So uh, effectively, any ETL transformation that you will be running will be encapsulated in a job or task, right? And then we'll see the task properties, what are the different types of transformations which are there, and what are global variables in CPADS, uh, the pre-task, post-task, how to execute a scripts. And then we'll just see uh, the some basics of uh, SAP IBP planning area, um, you know, where we push the data from CPADS, and followed by main task, which is about executing the, uh, creating and executing master data and transactional data jobs uh, by, by connecting to ECC or any other ERP system and uh, pushing data to IBP. Then comes one advanced topic, which is about working with Odata APIs. Uh, yeah, so followed by like connecting uh, IBP with the AWS or Azure uh, for, uh, uh, you know, building your set of reports there. So uh, to start off with for this session, I'll just start off with introducing what is SAP CPIDS. So CPIDS uh, in a nutshell is a ETL tool. Uh, ETL stands for extract, which is extracting the data, transform, which is applying some business logic and transforming the data. Uh, for example, um, uh, you know, you have some names, business names coming uh, from some field and you want a starting five characters. That is one transformation. So transforming the data and finally you load the data into some target system. Uh, in this case, IBP. So uh, CPIDS is effectively a ETL, uh, Extract, Transform and Load tool. And this tool is provisioned with SAP IBP. So to understand CP IDS, firstly, let's, uh, you know, you have to understand a bit of what is SAP IBP. So how it works is that, uh, you know, generally in bigger organizations, uh, they need planning tools. Uh, the reason why, why they need planning tools is because, you know, for example, it will help them um, in, for example, seeing the historical sales and, uh, 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 you know, creating a projection for uh, creating the products in future. So for example, demand forecasting, how much products they should uh, produce for 
next year so for example let's assume that in every year somewhere in june and july the demand for the products is very less so if you have that uh, planning tool with y- with yourself or in your organization you would know in advance that for the month of june and july your uh, demand would be less so you have to produce less products so that you don't have face issues with excess stock uh, in your company so that's the main reason and main use of planning tools uh, there are other features also but uh, uh, that's not the intent of this discussion so the discussion is very simple that we need planning tools for uh, making um, you know for for supply chain and uh, uh, making good business decisions um, and to see demand forecasting so that's that's the reason you you need some planning tools so there are different types of planning tools which are available in market so with sap sap provides planning tools like sap apo uh, which is advanced planning and optimization that was a on prem tool and uh, then followed by sap has given a new tool which is sap ibp uh, which is sap integrated business planning and it's a cloud based tool and it is a replacement of sap apo now when i'm saying it's a cloud based tool what picture do you create in your mind so um, let's take it this way consider that you have a company called as xyz and in your company you have n number of systems like apo ecc bw mdg databases virtual machines um, you know you have you have all that uh, infrastructure with you now generally in your enterprise you would like the external world or external traffic to stop interacting with your on prem systems so that's where in general you have a firewall in between which blocks the traffic from the outside world into your company uh now what is a uh, cloud so cloud is something like youtube or gmail wherein doesn't matter wherever you are you can access that uh, tool using a url right so similar to that uh, when sap says that ibp is a cloud based tool the thing is for example uh, it's not something in the cloud it's basically that sap has big data centers so assume that sap has a big data center or a big office i would put it in this way just in an analogy way a uh, big office somewhere in um, india or us or australia um and in that big office they will be having uh, a lot of storage units and compute power right supercomputers kind of stuff so uh that that's where the physical infrastructure lies now then they they have uh, sap also has their own database called as hana database so that is one layer which sits on top of those storage unit and compute power which i have shown here and then then sits their application layer which is sap ibp so when your company xyz wants uh, tells sap that we want to uh, utilize sap ibp in our organization what actually sap does uh, in analogy way that uh, sap creates the tenants for your company right in their data center and give urls to you similar to youtube and gmail urls and then your company uh, uh planning team can use those urls from anywhere around the world and can access the uh, sap ibp planning tool now and, and when we say in cloud which essentially means is there is no need for you to install sap ibp in your physical in your on premise network because it's available on cloud which means they will be giving some urls to you there will be a physical infrastructure but that will be in one place which is in sap data center and uh, they will be exposing the urls which you can access around the world the next part is uh, if it is in cloud how does it integrate with your on premise systems because we have a firewall in between so sap ibp practically cannot interact with your on premise systems that's the first challenge the second challenge is how will you transfer the data because the sap ibp needs for example for um, uh, it needs historical sales data right it needs some uh, uh, current orders which are uh, uh, being uh, you know uh, created by users it needs to fulfill those orders it would need to have that data also so how does that data flow from your on premise systems to ibp so sap has given one more tool along with sap ibp which is cpi ds and this tool is the etl tool this tool is responsible for extracting the data from your on prem systems and pushing it into ibp 
Again, this tool is also a cloud tool, which means uh, this is also uh, existing in SAP Cloud Data Center. So now the question is, if it is also a cloud tool, and if I have to access this tool also via some URL, then how will this tool connect to SAP, uh, my on-premise systems? That's a valid question. Uh, the answer for that is that SAP CPI DS has a backend, or in SAP CPI DS, there is a functionality of agents. The agents are the backbone of this entire architecture. Those agents, uh, CPIDS agents, we have to install in the virtual machines of your on-premise systems. So obviously when it is installed in your virtual machine of your on-premise systems, virtual machine could be your Windows server or could be your Linux server, could be anything, right? So when you install that agent here, that agent will be able to communicate with your SAP systems and the agent will also be able to communicate with your CPIDS. So agent is the one which is creating that communication, uh, establishing that communication between your source systems and the target system. So uh, th th that's where SAP CPIDS and IBP fits into your enterprise, right? So uh, that's the overall architecture. Now, just to understand it a bit more, for example, um, especially from time series uh, integration because uh, basically IB IBP has two types of integration models which is time series integration and order based integration. So how it works is that uh, time series in for time series integration you actually uh, need some historical sales data or the demand or the inventory levels which have been recorded at regular time intervals so that you can use that data and prepare and do your forecasting using some algorithms and uh, do some planning on top of that. So that you can, you would know that in future how much demand you are going to get for your products. Um, whereas order based integration is more towards the real time orders which are getting created in your source systems or in your ECC system. And it's more about fulfilling those real time orders, right? So that order based integration is fulfilled via another tool, which is called as real time integration, SAP RTI. And time series integration is done via CPIDS. So uh, for CPIDS, you only need to worry about time series integration. Now, as I explained in the previous diagram here, that how this landscape uh, looks like in picture, uh, that's where the landscape uh, which has been given by SAP is, you have your source systems um, in your uh, on-prem network and in those on in that on-prem network you install your data services agents and these agents have uh, the option of connecting with both your source systems as well as your target system so this is your target system which is ibp cpids sits in front of ibp and cpids has very tight integration with ibp and cpids also has very tight integration with data services so whenever suppose you have your product job product master job where you push some products from ECC into IBP. So you have a job created in CPIDS. When you run the job, the traffic from CPIDS goes into agents. Agents execute your mapping into your source systems. Basically agents run the queries in your source systems, extracts the data and pushes the data back into IBP system. That's how the entire flow will run, right? So uh, that's it for today's session. Uh, it's more towards understanding what is CPIDS, what is the architecture, and uh, uh, we will see uh, more of it in future sessions. Just in case if you want to have full-fledged training on CPIDS, please feel free to WhatsApp on the given number. And uh, if you want to get in touch via email, uh, please feel free to write an email to us. Yeah, that's it for today's session. Thanks.